Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. 82, and we'll do verse 1, and then we'll do verse 4. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. A day fidelis, lady triumphantes, Venite, venite in Bethlehem. Latum vide, de, regem angelorum. Venite adoremus, venite adoremus. Venite adorebus dominum. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and congratulations on your Latin. That was very good. I think most of us uh, who grew up in my era at least know the song of O Come All Ye Faithful. We come together in this uh, final week of the Christmas season. As we do so, we ask for God's pardon and forgiveness as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who called the bishop St. John Neumann, renowned for his charity and pastoral service, to shepherd your people in America, grant by his intercession that as we foster the Christian education of youth and are strengthened by the witness of brotherly love, we may constantly increase the family of your church through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. 
we have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. In this is love brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence on the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And so one who fears is not yet perfect in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on, on earth, earth will adore you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to you, O Christ, proclaimed to the Gentiles. Glory to you, O Christ, believed in throughout the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After the 5,000 had eaten and were satisfied, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side toward Bethsaida, where he dismissed the crowd. And when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was far out on the sea, and he was alone on shore. Then he saw that they were tossed about while rowing, for the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. They'd all seen him and were terrified. But at once he spoke with them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. He got into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely astounded. They had not understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of the Lord. This week in the church's liturgy, uh, we're between the celebration of Epiphany, which we celebrated this past Sunday, and the baptism of the Lord this coming Sunday. But as we're in this first week of Christmas, we also have uh, three American saints that we celebrate in the middle of this week. Yesterday, we celebrated the feast of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, who was a native born from the United States and started the Sisters of Charity. She, as we know, was a, a mother, a wife, mother, widow, and then became a religious sister. And really, got the, was the first to start the Catholic parochial school system in the United States. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Bishop uh, John Neumann, uh, who was also very instrumental in the Catholic schools, and we'll talk about him today. Tomorrow is the Feast of St. André Bassett, the uh, miracle worker from Montreal, uh, who uh, lived into the uh, 20th century. So we have these saints to focus on, as we also have these beautiful scripture passages for Christmas, and we hear over and over in this first letter from St. John, where John describes God as love. God is love as the basic definition. And John could say that because he experienced in Jesus Christ that he was the beloved disciple, that he was loved by God, which is really the great uh, lesson that we all have to learn. Then, if we are truly 
love God, then how do we respond in loving one another? And we see that in these great saints uh, here in America that uh, for the most part uh, were basically uh, missionaries, but helped to bring the faith into a new country. John Neumann was born in what was today the Czech Republic, but he was basically of German background. And uh, he grew up, uh, was born in 1811. So uh, we're going back several centuries. And uh, he was a, a very good student, studied for the priesthood. When he was 25, he was all ready to be ordained a priest. And the bishop said, we have too many priests. We don't need you. Now, we don't have that problem in the United States today, do we? Nor did they then. So he came to New York, uh, all finished with all his theological studies. He didn't have any recommendations, but uh, often what happened as soon as you arrived in the New World, if you were ready to be ordained, you'd be ordained. Bishop Dubois ordained him. He became a redemptorist, the first American to be joined the redemptorist order. And he worked out in Western New York, Buffalo area, Pennsylvania, Maryland, primarily with German immigrants. He wrote two catechisms in German. He was a native German speaker. Then he was named the Bishop of Philadelphia, which was a, a major post for him in his uh, early 40s. And uh, he died in 1860 uh, at the age of 48. Some of his uh, achievements, of course, was the fact that uh, he really worked hard to bring the faith into a pioneer country where Catholics were very much a minority. He, as I said, he wrote these uh, catechisms in German for the people. And uh, he was the one who invented the 40 hours devotion. I don't know if that's too well known today, but the 40 hours devotion was a way to uh, each parish would uh, have Eucharistic adoration for 40 hours as, a, as an event uh, each and every year. And he was also a very prominent in bringing about the Catholic school system, which really was the foundation of Catholicism in the United States. Uh, we're the only country that would have a parish school for full education, that was run by the Catholic Church. That was something unique to America. He was also responsible for helping a number of religious orders of sisters get their feet on the ground. Uh, there's a uh, community of sisters, the Oblate Sisters of Baltimore, who are an African-American group founded by a woman from Haiti. And when they came to the United States, the hierarchy wasn't too interested in them. But it was uh, Bishop John Nauman, St. John Nauman, uh, who was able to uh, allow them to work in the United States and, and uh, be able to be great educators throughout our country. So today, as we honor uh, St. John Neumann, uh, this uh, great uh, missionary, uh, we asked for blessings for our country and that uh, however we bring education to our children, uh, we know that's our biggest task to bring the faith into the next century. Now let us offer our prayers to our gracious God. We pray today for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for our Bishop Ronald. We pray for all members of the Redemptorist Order for God's blessings today on this Feast of St. John Neumann. We pray to the Lord. Pray for all who bring education to their children, specifically Catholic education, whether that's in religious education programs or great sacrifices for Catholic schools. We pray to the Lord. Pray for an end to the pandemic, and we ask for safety for all people, and pray especially for our health care workers at this time of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Pray for safety for all travelers at this winter time. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all our beloved dead, and remember in a special way at our Mass today the repose of the souls of Maria B. Damian and Jean Zachary, and we also pray for birthday blessings for Alex and Aiden Yu. We pray to the Lord. Good and loving God, we offer these prayers and petitions of our faith community gathered here today, confident you'll hear and answer our every prayer, both spoken and unspoken, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Merciful Father, look upon the gifts we have placed on your altar and grant that we may reflect the image of Christ your Son, just as you granted to St. John Neumann to imitate what he celebrated through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John Neumann, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Refreshed by our participation in the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, we ask, O Lord, that by the example of St. John Neumann, we may experience the power of this sacrament and remain constantly in the Church by the bond of unity and truth through Christ our Lord. As we conclude our Mass, let's offer Hail Mary to our Blessed Mother. Pray a special way today for missionaries around the world, particularly those who may be far away from home at this holiday time or discouraged that uh, God will give them every grace and blessing in their work for the church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. And since we're still in the Christmas spirit, uh, we'll sing a closing hymn. And let's do number 82 in your music book. Angels we have heard on high. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply echo back their joyous strain. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Say what may the tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo.